Oh Lord, how excellent is your name. God, we recognize you for being God. And God all by yourself. There's nobody like you, God. There's nobody that compares to you. God, you're the only one who has ever created an earth, God. You're the only one that has ever created mankind. But then, God, you have always showed yourself to be to be goodness and mercy. God, we thank you for your favor. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for allowing us, God, to see this last Sunday of the year. And God, our hearts now burn, God. Burn with excitement. We rejoice right now, God, for you make our company people. We rejoice right now, God, for you make our Savior. We rejoice right now, God, for you make our grace giver. We rejoice right now, God, for you surprise our enemy. me. Right now. Because she's always shown love and kindness towards us. And Lord, we simply need you right now. Right now Lord. And God knows we can't get along without you. Right God, we are always looking to the hills for which comes our help. Yes. And God, we know that our help comes from nobody but you.
Amen. The struggle is over for you. That's encouragement yeah. for all of us. Yeah. Is that yes, the struggle is over yeah. for you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Today is a special day. So because it's the last Sunday of the year. And it's also our youth Sunday. And I thought that it would just be sufficient to have our very own YPG to preach on this day. Now y'all are looking at me like I'm funny. But I said that it is youth day. And I thought that it would be great to have YPG on this day. I mean, the whole thing was just going to be the So go ahead and keep your hands together. So I can do it. Come on, everybody get to say it. Say it, I can do it. Come on, 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 I can do it. God, we thank you for looking beyond all of our faults and supplying all of our needs. God, it's preaching time. I've done my studying, but God, I need your power. Hide me behind the cross. And God, if there was anything that I did on today, yesterday, God, last week, this week, to keep me from preaching to your people, God, I ask that you would just forgive me, sir. God, don't punish the people for the frailty of your preaching. God, some person has talked about needing a word that's going to help them make it to the next year. God, this has been a trying year for somebody. But God, we're coming today in person, God, to just wait on you. God, we love you. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Let every heart say amen. Amen. And amen again. Amen. To the pastor of this church, to our shepherd, Dr. Carter, to my family for coming. Amen. 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 To all of you, my brothers and sisters, it is a nice time to be here at the historic Ninth Street Missionary Baptist Church. All right. As I was telling Pastor Carter, this time last year, it was my first Sunday here. Oh, and now the Lord has saw fit to allow me to stand on this Sunday. Well, I won't be before you long, but there is a word that I want to try to lift up that's found in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah, the 40th chapter, verses 30 and 31. Oh, Lord, I need a word. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 30 and 31 and it reads even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary and they shall walk and not faint. But faith that wait up on the Lord. Oh, I wish I had somebody. Shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run
Have they not known or heard of the greatness of Jehovah's power? <laughs> what image, what image could ever capture the greatness of the one who hung the stars? And for as it is recorded, my brothers and sisters, that when he calls them out at night, not one is missing. Oh. My brothers and sisters, may I suggest on this morning that if God cares for the stars and they are not his namesake, surely he cares just as much, if not even more, for his children. Child of God, child of God, through your waiting, you must have determination. To wait on the Lord. Yeah. My brothers and sisters, when you take a stand to wait on the Lord, mm. your waiting suggests that you have, take a, have taken a position to wait, which means you are standing still. Yeah. You are not easily persuaded to move while you wait. Yeah. And if you don't believe that, Moses told the people, in the book of Exodus, to fear not, fear not. and to stand firm, yeah. and to see the salvation of the Lord, yeah. for which he will work for you yeah. today. Yeah. Yeah. And Paul tells us in the book of Romans, for I am persuaded <laughs> that neither death, nor, nor life, yeah. nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. When you wait on something, my brothers and sisters, you are determined to wait and stand still. For Psalms, the 46th chapter, and the 10th verse tells us to be still and to know that I am I am God. I will be exalted among the heavens. And I will be exalted in the earth. Child of God, when you are determined, you are committed to the plan of God. Commit. You know what I found out? Us as Christians have a hard time of committing. Come on. Come on. We have commitment issues. <laughs> and we wonder why our prayers what? are being answered. You preach it, God. Well, may I suggest to you, my brothers and sisters, we can even commit to building a relationship with God. We have become the popcorn microwave generation. We want God to move right then and now, and we don't even like to wait. And I too, my brothers and sisters, I found myself convicted of that. But may I suggest something? That it's during our waiting that my waiting tells me that my strength is being renewed by the Spirit. The child gets dressed and waits patiently by the door. And here it is, I can see this child in my spiritual imagination waiting by that door, uh -huh. waiting patiently, no matter how long it takes the parent to come because the parent promised the child that they would come. Now the only reason that the child continues to wait is because the parent has made a vow or a promise to the child. My brothers and sisters, the only reason or the reason that I continue to wait is because I know that my Neither the son of man 
that he should repent. Had he said, and shall he not do it? Or had he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Here it is, my brothers and sisters. A question sparked my interest. Why would we wait on our natural father for a long period of time? For a long time. And not wait on our heavenly father. Yeah. Our spiritual father. Oh, who owns a cattle on a thousand hills. Yeah. The one who spoke to the wind and the waves as they even obeyed him. Yeah. My yeah. brothers and sisters, we must learn how to wait. Yeah. The child of God, not only should we have determination, but if we wait, rest or restoration will take place. Right. It's in the text, verse 30, it says, Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. Here it is. Why the scripture is so significant. Because if you remember, when you were younger, mm -hmm. your conception of rest was that you did not need it because you never grew tired. Yeah. Right. When we think of youth, youth are not supposed to get tired. Right. They should have a lot of energy. Yeah. Now, growing up with some older saints, I often remember my dad and my grandfather saying things and phrases like this. Son, back in my day, back in my day. I could drive from here And here it is. The writer Isaiah includes the youth. That even they shall faint, they shall grow weak. Even the youth shall become weary and tired. Even the youth shall utterly fall. Guaranteeing, my brothers and sisters, that eventually in due time and due season, it will eventually happen. But then. I'm going to say it again, but they. Oh, y'all going to shout on me because I guess y'all don't understand. I guess I'm the only one that gets excited when I see the word but inserted. Oh, some of y'all still looking at me a little slow. Well, let's go back to grade school. In grade school, my brothers and sisters, we are made aware that the word but is a conjunction. A conjunction, my brothers and sisters, is a word used to connect clauses or sentences to coordinate words in the same clause. What I like most about a conjunction is a conjunction is often necessary yet helpful. Y'all still don't hear it. What we deserve on what should have happened to you. God inserted a conjunction and gave us another chance. For God so loved the Lord that He gave His Son and His only Son that whatsoever we need in Him shall not be God's
righteous. Have you seen that word, brother? The Lord delivered them. Our Lord. Not just some. Not just a few. Not just this one. Not just seven. But out of them all. Oh, my brothers and sisters. I thank God for every book that has a crown in my life. That wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. My brothers and sisters, your waiting will bring about restoration. And your strength will be renewed, which will allow you to continue to run this Christian race. If you wait on the Lord, wait on the Lord. Not only will he give you rest or restore you, but he will elevate you elevate. or raise you up. Yes. Elevation, raise you up. They shall mount up. I'm still in the text like eagles. The prophet Isaiah uses wings <laughs> like eagles in the same way. Attributing the great characteristics of eagles so that those who remain faithful to God and look forward to their heavenly reward, the phrase, my brothers and sisters, mount up in Hebrew is translated a lot, which means to go up, to ascend, or go over a boundary. Here it is, Isaiah communicating the promise that God will provide Renewed strength. Renewed strength. And courage to overcome obstacles if Israel would have been patient and trusted in the Lord's sorrows. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. But my brothers and sisters, oh I just stopped by the historic, the historic Night Street Missionary Baptist Church to just tell someone. That if you wait on God, God will give you the ability to ascend over every situation, every obstacle that has been in your way. Yeah, I know you may have some obstacles this year. I know you may have some obstacles last year. If there was a woman in the midst of a worship experience, they say that she yelled out a declaration, Lord, I thank you for my new car. After service was over, she walked out the front door, walked down the steps, walked to the corner, and caught the bus home. That next Sunday, she came to service. That next Sunday, she again worshiped and praised God. Yeah. She again declared that, Lord, I thank you yeah. for my new car. Yeah. After service was over, she walked out the front door, walked down the steps, walked to the corner, and she caught the bus home. Wow. Well, that third Sunday, she was again at church, Again, praising God. She again declared, Lord, I thank you for my new car. Well, that Sunday, the spirit got to move and service ran a little longer than normal. And so by this time, she got out the front door, walked down the steps, went to the corner to wait on the bus. Well, by this time, she realized that since they got out late, the bus had already gone. Well, by this time, the pastor was coming out the door, and he looked in the distance, and he seen his church member over there waiting. And he went up to her and said, is there anything, anything wrong? She said, no, sir. I just missed the bus, and I'm waiting on it to come back around. 
He said, well, that reminds me. I've been hearing you say for the last few Sundays, Lord, I thank you for my new car. But you are still catching the bus home. Is it that you, want, you don't want to drive your new and fancy car to church? Is it that someone is borrowing your car while you're at church? Or could it be that you've even bought a living, a living and your car doesn't even work now? She said, no sir, that's not it. He said, well, why aren't you driving your new car to church yet? She said, well, because, Pastor, that's real simple. She said, I don't have it yet. When I moved into the city, I asked the Lord to bless me with a good job. It took him a little while, but he gave me one. She said, and, and, and I asked the Lord to bless me with a good and a godly husband. She said, Pastor, it took him a while, but he blessed me with one. She said, Pastor, the doctor told us that we could not have any children. She said, I asked the Lord to bless me with some offsprings. She said, it took him a little while. But now I got to. Yeah. She said, and now my job has transferred me all the way across town. She said, and now, Pastor, I asked the Lord to bless me with the new car. She said, and I just finished since God is the same God that blessed me with the rest of this stuff. She said, I just finished with the new car.
for all of God's children to wait on the Lord. Sometimes in life we get in a hurry. And our hurry causes for us to sometimes slip and fall. And that's just not only youth, but even some of us old folks. We slip and fall too. But the good news about Isaiah, God has told us that he says to wait. And if you would learn how to just be patient, your falls will come to a minimum. Tell your neighbor, say, don't run. Tell your neighbor, say, don't get in a hurry. Just learn how to be patient. And your falls will be minimal. Amen? Amen. If you don't mind standing right where you are, if you don't mind standing right where, where you are. Were you blessed by the word? Yes. 